something was just said at the coronavirus daily briefing, whatever you want to call it, from the White House, from Dr. Burks, not Fauci. This is the female doctor. They spent the first 15 to 20 minutes of the press conference trying to walk back this um, comment made by the CDC director about next fall. And he's encouraging everybody to get the flu shot <clears throat> so that they don't have a problem next fall. Now, I want you to listen to her own words and try to keep your jaw from hitting the floor. You're not going to believe this. So I just, I, we talked about this yesterday when you asked me this question, um, and someone, I think, used the word devastating. And I want to really, again, emphasize to the American public that when we first interacted with this virus for the first time in the February and March timeframe, we didn't have an understanding of its transmissibility, all of its symptoms. We do now in the February and March timeframe. We didn't have an understanding of its transmissibility, all of its symptoms. Back the truck up. Hold on. You're saying that when you started recommending orders being issued to shut down America, February and March, you had, quote unquote, your own words, no understanding of its transmissibility. One more time. We do, first time in the February and March time frame, we didn't have an understanding of its transmissibility, all of its symptoms. We didn't have an understanding of its transmissibility and its symptoms in February and March. We didn't have an understanding of its transmissibility or its symptoms in February and March, yet you shut down the world's economy. This was exactly the point many of us, including myself, was trying to make with AIDS in the 80s. Neither did we at the time. And AIDS was, HIV, was so much more deadly than this ever was, and still is. And we didn't literally create Armageddon, and I don't think that's exaggerating, around the world at this point. Oil has gone to, what, negative $40 a barrel? They're talking about depression, twice the depression level era damage done to businesses. That is an amazing admission by Dr. Burks that they didn't have an understanding of this. Yet they made decisions anyway. So I'm sure a lot of you are asking, well, then why would they do this and why would they do that? I'm telling you right now, that is the smoking gun for me. This is bioethicists run amok. The great human dignity heist. How bioethicists are trashing the foundations of Western civilization. What I said about who benefits, bioethicists literally are in bed with the, um, the green movement but not the good green movement, the one that wants to just do conservation. No, these are the types that want to destroy modern society as we know it and rebuild it in their image. Let me zoom this in real quick. Arthur Kaplan, the challenge is for bioethicists to position themselves to be on panels, boards, and other decision-making bodies where public policy positions will be established, where the exploding changes in healthcare that are now underway will be addressed. That is exactly what this is. Smoking gun now admitted. They didn't care. They didn't care about the transmissibility of this or the symptoms. They saw an opportunity and they jumped on it. And I have tried to be fair to the president. I really have in this because I think he's starting to 
get his mind back. But I think back in January and February, the man has an established issue with being a bit of a hypochondriac. This is not new for Mr. Trump. He's, you know, washes his hands all the time. He's kind of a germaphobe. Maybe hypochondriac is a bit of a stretch, but a germaphobe for sure. So if somebody got in his ear and somebody took advantage of a weakness they already knew was there and made him believe there was a giant boogeyman that wasn't, that could have been the impetus for all of this. And especially with everything going on with China, I'm telling you right now, these bioethicist types are slick. They are, and Fauci's wife is one as well. They are all over the place, and they have placed themselves in little positions of power here and there just to kind of nudge things one way or the other. And if you think I'm kidding about this, there is something even more frightening going on in New York. As if New York could get any more frightening, right? They have just ordered, and you can look this up, they will not be resuscitating anybody who flatlines in an ambulance. They won't be doing it. You know why? Because of the uh, shortage of resources, of PPE, for, because of treating COVID-19. Now think about this for a minute. Basically, they are choosing who lives and who dies. This person codes over here. Oh, well, sorry about that. We're going to save the plastic. We're going to not waste the uh, equipment to save that life. Because who knows, that plastic could end up in the ocean. You see the connection? All of the pictures of the, the jellyfish swimming in the canals in Venice. The clean air. All of the reports about the, the drop in CO2 levels. That you're seeing every, about all the good things that have come out of this. While tens of millions of people are pretty much throwaway now. This is what's coming. These are the people who are in charge. These are the people who are pulling the strings behind all of the, the faces that you see. And it's not something I've seen referred to much here on YouTube. You know, people talk about the generalized, quote-unquote, deep state. These people are way more deadly. Because they have it in their minds that they believe some lives are more important than others. Truthfully, that's how they see the world. And they literally just admitted it on live TV and nobody said a word. I can't believe that, because that press conference is still going on, and nobody asked her a question about that statement. Nobody said, wait a minute, you're saying in February and March, you didn't have any concept of this, but you were telling everybody you knew exactly how that happened? They didn't understand symptoms or transmissibility in February and March. Those were her words. But yet they were making decisions. And now that not enough people are dying fast enough, apparently, for these people, they're going to start make, making more people die by not resuscitating them. Those of you that have talked about the Georgia Guidestones and depopulation and all this, I think you were half right. You see, there's not going to be bodies stacked like cordwood. There's not going to be this giant apocalyptic event. It's going to happen in back rooms. It's going to happen quietly while they maintain the illusion of normalcy. And the... Uh, almighty grail of public health. You see that whole encouragement to get a flu shot? Here's what's coming. If you don't, or if you don't get your kids the vaccine, they're going to take them. Because not only are you demonstrating that you won't protect your kids from basic, you know, threats that they are deeming to be um, serious, 
you're not going to protect society either. I just had a grandchild that was born yesterday. And I am absolutely terrified about the next 20 years. I, I won't lie, at least in this country. Very, very seriously thinking about uh, maybe not being. Because if this continues to go down this road where these holier-than-thou secularists that hate Christians continue to rise in power. Think about how many hours a day now we are seeing doctors speak from positions of power in our government. And how leaders are just taking a back seat and listening to them. And any leader that doesn't like Governor Kemp or Governor DeSantis or Governor Abbott, they are vilified. Why aren't you taking the lead from the doctor? Because the doctor's not in charge, that's why. The doctor didn't take an oath to protect the Constitution, that's why. We take their advice under advisement, that's why it's called advice. But then we make the decisions. But there are people that believe that's not good enough. Bioethicists. Remember that name. Like, share, subscribe.